Hello, dear students. Welcome you all to the 10th lecture of Rural Marketing. And in today's lecture, we are going to cover two topics, challenges in rural and non-farm sectors and role of NGOs and private sector organization in rural and non-farm sectors. And after this, uh, we will do a quick revision of your first module as uh, with these two topics, we are going to cover your first unit. So let's start with challenges in rural farm sectors. So here we go. So when we talk about uh, the associated challenges with uh, rural non-farm sectors, first challenge comes is the challenge with the infrastructure because we know that uh, in rural areas there are shortages of quality and reliable infrastructure as well as the quantity of infrastructure is not poor. So power shortage is there or um, we can say that road connectivity is very poor and uh, machinery and technology availability is not there up to the mark. So these are the some uh, these are some infrastructure related problems which are the hurdles of rural non-farm sector. Apart from this, regulatory instructions on small scale sectors are also a kind of challenge for rural and non-farm sectors. So initially, <clears throat> investment restrictions were imposed on small scale sectors in rural areas. And uh, uh, although uh, it was in initiated to create a domestic markets and quantitative restrictions imposed to protect small scale industries, but in 1990s, a policy came and it was very, uh, very, very, we can say harmful for small scale uh, sectors, especially for the rural areas. So in this capital investment limits were discouraged and because of that economy of scale was not, uh, um, that uh, small scale industries were not able to get the economy of scale. And and uh, whatever the concessions were offering to the industries, it was creating a problem for reinvestment in the um, credit system. So this is also restrictions on small scale industries are also a kind of uh, hurdles for uh, rural and non-farm sectors because uh, every time regulations and rules change and because of that, uh, these small scale industries or non-farm sectors, they get uh, affected. Next is the quality of manpower, like education and awareness and migration of skilled labor, we will discuss. So high level of illiteracy in rural area have hampered the growth of the rural non-farm sectors. So we can say that in rural areas, lack of educa education leads to labor being uh, stagnant in agriculture or if they are a little bit educated, they prefer to go for employment, salaried employment, say, so they don't want to start their own business. And lack of technical skills also, it is also a kind of challenge for rural and non-farm sectors because um, there is little incentives for rural firms to invest in technology. So leading to a low level of labor productivity is there because uh, rulers uh, skill man, uh, ruler manpower is not very good, uh, very well skilled in technology. Apart from this, migration of skill level from rural to urban region is also a very, very, uh, we can say, uh, harmful or a hurdle for uh, rural small scale industries because, because the skill labor, they prefer to go to the urban areas because they get more wages there. Apart from this, we can say that forward and backward integration is also a hurdle for, or we can say the challenge for rural and non-farm sectors. So these all are the challenges. Next, how the NGOs and private sectors, uh, what is the role of NGOs and private sectors in rural and non-farm sectors? So NGOs, uh, they can provide training in soft skills, uh, which can help the rural population. Okay, in soft skills, or we can say that they provide the training for uh, manpower 
so that they can start their own business and for digital tools using a digital tools and all soft skills are required so they help them uh, in assessing quality inputs and crop advisory for many of the non farmer activities and social workers can encourage the young generation to learn the techniques uh, of group non farm activities and they help create a direct link with the government so that uh, the rural youth can get the benefit of the rural schemes also they help in establishing corporate societies so that economic activities which require large resources can be pooled together so these are the uh, we can say the roles uh, ngos or no private sector perform you might be aware that in your city also there was an ngo called kagash still it is there so they also work uh, for the same they give training uh, to the rural people uh, for soft skills as well as uh, they try to make rural population skilled in some activity so that they can perform their they can start their business so there are so many um, ngos already working in your areas also you can go and search for them you can talk to those people and you can make a, um, a presentation whenever the college will open you can present your findings there and it could be a summer internship for you people also to uh, to do an analysis how a ngo performing uh, or uh, how ngo is contributing for non farm sectors in rural areas so with this slide your first module is over so let's do a quick review what all things we have learned in your first module so let's go to the first slide in the beginning So initially we have seen what is ruler marketing meaning, sorry, ruler management meaning. So it is the study of planning, organizing, directing, and controlling the rural areas, cooperatives, agribusinesses, and allied fields. Then further we have seen that what is the scope of ruler management in India. So we discussed the findings of uh, a research study done by Essinger. Then rural management institutes in India we have uh, seen. After this objectives of rural management significant and what are the various sectors of economy in India. Then we learn about the agriculture sector and we have learned the various schemes uh, by government of India to support the agriculture sector we have seen. Under this uh, enum we have seen national mission for sustainable agriculture kisan credit cards these schemes are important anyone uh, may come in exam also as a management student you should know that what are the various schemes run by government of india pradhan mantri kisi vikas yojana and uh, pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana we have seen then krishunath yojana we have seen pradhan mantri annadata yojana Krisi Sanche Yojana, Asal Bhima Yojana, and all PM Kusum also for renewable energy we have seen. And then after that, we discuss about the non agriculture sector. In non agriculture sectors, uh, it involves the activities uh, like household and non household. And then we have seen that how the agriculture and non agriculture sectors are related. Then the role of non agriculture sector in the development of uh, India. And then we have seen uh, what are the various policies by government of India for rural non-agriculture sector. Under this, we have uh, seen Manarega, Deen Dayalupodhya, Grameen Kusil Yojana, we have uh, seen National Rural Life Food Mission. And further, Ajivikta, Grameen Express Yojana, Development of Rural Tourism, uh, Gram Sadak Yojana, Mudra, we have seen, although it is not a part of uh, it is not only concerned with the rural area, it is for all rural plus urban. Then today we have learned challenges and role of NGOs. So I hope 
uh, you understood uh, the introduction of rural management and uh, with this slide i am ending your first module keep on preparing your notes any day i can ask for your notes if you have any queries related to first module you can ping me i am going to help you surely so with this uh, i am ending my today's lecture thank you so much for watching